Outreach providers actually have started already reaching out to people as early as Monday, informing them of the impending hurricane and the need to seek shelter. In addition, uh, we've been communicating regularly with our homeless shelter providers, emergency and transitional, as well as all other support providers, keeping them updated with the information. Today at 1 p.m., we'll be having a conference call uh, with all of the homeless service providers to go over the current status of the hurricane, shelter, uh, evacuation shelter options, as well as transportation options. We worked uh, closely with Department of Transportation Services and the bus to ensure that we will have transportation for all those who wish to go uh, to an evacuation shelter. In addition, uh, we will make sure, especially during the time frame of, of Thursday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., to concentrate our outreach efforts so that we can give everyone multiple opportunities to seek shelter. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'd like John Noachi of the Department of Transportation Services Deputy Director to talk about our bus service will be providing, but also the bus service will be providing to those who don't have homes and whether they can bring pets on. So, John. Aloha, John Nooji, Deputy Director of the City's Department of Transportation Services. So, out of concern for the safety of, of you know, just people in Honolulu, we are going to curtail our services at 6 p.m. on Thursday. So, all trips starting beef up to 6 p.m. will operate to their completion and handy van will parallel that so all trips scheduled up until 6 p.m. will run we will also be providing um, with the assistance of mark alexander um, and dem evacuation shuttles to pr uh, provide transport for everyone to um, nearby shelters so th those will operate on demand the buses will be signed with evacuation, no fare will be required. People can, if they see one of these buses marked evacuation, they can wave the bus down and the bus will stop to service them. Um, we will allow pets, but we do ask that people have their pets controlled, um, either leashed or in cages if possible to help that make that safe for everyone that their, their pet and interacting with other pets and other people on board the bus will remain safe for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing that we are working on with the visitor industry, and we may have more to announce uh, at a later date, is making sure that those folks who work, work in Waikiki to take care of our visitors have an ability to get to work and perhaps home during this period of time because it's 36 hours of impact. And if the airport remains open, we also have workers that go out there, and there's been a request made that perhaps we have limited bus service provided to these two areas and to certain parts of our community to get people to and from work. We're looking at that. We're working on it. We want to try to see where we can accommodate, but we don't want to endanger both our bus drivers or those on the buses during the during the major impact of this storm. Um, we're going to be working with the police department also, who may have to help secure some of the roads and help guide access in and out of these places, both the airport and Waikiki. Um, I would like Laurie Kaikina to talk a little bit about Opala Pickup. Laurie. Kahikina, Department of Environmental Services. As the mayor mentioned, tomorrow will be business as usual. All of the carts that you put out will be collected, including your bulky waste. But as of tomorrow night, please, especially your bulky and your carts, pull them back into your property and secure them so it's not flying around. Um, if the storm does hit, we, for the cleanup, the debris cleanup afterwards, if you could keep in mind, because I have your attention now, separate your trash into six different categories, your regular home waste, your green waste, your white goods, your electronic goods, construction debris, and hazardous waste. We do have a flyer, we'll be putting it up on the city's website, including ours, opala.org, under the hurricane. So if you need reference to that, this is after the fact though. And one thing, if I could please stress on the wastewater side, I do understand flooding is an issue, but please do not open your clean out caps do not open manholes to drain your yard in the in the area because what that does is maybe it won't back up your home but it will back up your neighbor's home and then it causes spills all the way along the system including at the treatment plant it is not designed to take that storm water so please do not drain your rain gutters anything storm water into the sewers thank you thank you Lori. <coughs> Ernie Lau, who's the chief engineer of Board of Water Supply, I'd like him to say a few words about 
one, how much water, he has the best water in the world. Uh, but also we're asking to conserve the water and not irrigate during this period of time. So Ernie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ernie Lau, Manager and Chief Engineer, Honolulu Board of Water Supply. Uh, yes, we're asking people to really reduce unnecessary water use right now. We need to actually help fill up our water tanks up on the hillsides, our water reservoirs. Uh, and people do need water. Uh, I know there's a lot of bottled water that's been sold out at a number of establishments. Uh, so there's another place you can get water, clean drinking water, and that's going right to your tap in your home. So get a clean container like this. Make sure it's it's clean. And also there are instructions in the Hawaiian Electric uh, Handbook. This is a great resource on page 49. It tells you about sanitizing the water for drinking purposes. So there's a lot of water at pennies a gallon available right at your tap in your home without having to stand in line at the stores. Right now for Board of Water Supply, we have about seven large generators to power up our major pumping, some of our major pumping stations. Uh, our average demand is about 145 million gallons a day. Most of that depends on the electricity to pump water from underground aquifers. So after a storm, it depends on the damage and if power is out for most of this island, we won't be able to pump water as we normally do to everybody. So uh, with the se seven generators, we can produce probably about a 40 million gallons of drinking water from our, our wells, uh, but that won't cover full use for about a million people on this island. So we ask people to conserve, use water wisely, and uh, budget for about a gallon per person per day for a 14 day period. So go to the tap, get a clean container, use a little bit of bleach without any dye or uh, coloring, and use that to disinfect it. Or you can boil the water. After the storm hits, depending on the amount of damage, we're automatically gonna issue a boil water notice. We're gonna ask people, even if the water is available through your tap, to, as a precaution, uh, boil that water or use some liquid bleach to disinfect the water before drinking. And the reason for that is we don't know what kind of damage occurred to our water sources or to our pipes in our system. Uh, so until we can mobilize to get our our uh, water quality people out there to test the water, we won't be able to tell you that it's uh, safe to drink right out of the tap. So as a precaution, if there is a major hurricane hit on Oahu, boil your water or treat it with uh, liquid bleach. Thank you. Thank you, really appreciate it. I'd like Carolee Kubo to come up and talk a little about our city workers. And I did want to clarify, if I didn't make it clear enough, that our workers who are not needing to come to work, it's for two days, Thursday and Friday, not just Thursday, Thursday and Friday, but Carolee maybe can expand on that, please. 